Looking for an adrenaline rush? How about one that involves falling 205 miles at speeds around 17,150 miles per hour? That's what you'd face if you decided to skydive from the International Space Station. But just for a minute, pretend it's feasible. What would happen to your body as you stepped off the ISS and jumped into open space? The International Space Station is a massive craft that orbits the Earth traveling five miles per second. The ISS lives in the thermosphere, the same layer of the atmosphere where you'll find most satellites. Here temperatures can reach up to 4500 degrees F, but to a person, it would actually feel cold since there aren't enough molecules to transfer heat at this height. An average skydiving height is just 10,000 feet. Alan Eustace is the current record holder for the highest altitude free fall jump. He dove from about 135,908 feet in 2014 while wearing a specially designed spacesuit. The previous record holder was Felix Baumgartner, who jumped from 128,100 feet in 2012. These men both jumped from the stratosphere, which extends about 31 miles above the ground. This is the area of the atmosphere where most commercial passenger jets fly, a far distance from where the ISS orbits, which is about 248 miles above the Earth. Assuming you're simply jumping from the ISS without any sort of artificial propulsion methods, you won't actually fall to Earth. You'd be traveling the same speed as the ISS, 17,150 miles per hour. This speed is so high that the planet curves beneath the ISS as it travels forward, so the space station is perpetually falling around the planet. Speed will work the same way for your body. You'll settle into an orbit around Earth, just like the ISS. Unlike the ISS, you don't have a propulsion method to sustain your orbit over time. Assuming you don't crash into any satellites or space junk and have the equipment in your suit needed to sustain you, you'll eventually fall out of orbit and you'll spiral toward Earth. However, that would take at least 2.5 years if you're lucky. As you re-enter the mesosphere, you'll travel up to three times faster than the speed of sound. You'd likely pass out from the intense gravitational forces, and you'd burn up during re-entry at around 2,912 degrees F. Of course, this is all assuming you're using the technology we have today. Orbital Outfitters, a now defunct company that worked with NASA, was working to create a suit to enable space diving, both for astronauts in emergency situations and adrenaline junkies. For now though, humans can't re-enter Earth's atmosphere from these heights without the protection of some sort of craft, and that likely won't change anytime soon. Until then, we recommend staying tethered to any spacecraft you may be traveling on and finding your adrenaline rush elsewhere.